Because if you commit a sin between you and Allah, you have four conditions. What are they? Admit your sin, regret it, seek forgiveness of Allah and promise not to do it again. And if that happens, it's wiped out. Complete wipeout. Don't doubt it. But the problem is if your sin is connected to another human being, some of these pointers that I've been saying, you know, slander, backbiting, deceiving, abusing, etc., etc. Then there is a fifth condition above those four. And that is that person needs to forgive you. Who knows when you arrive on the day of judgment, what the reality was? What if it turned out that you were wrong? And what if it turned out that neither of you were wrong? What if just what if some of the detail happened to be against you? So therefore try and sort out your matters here. Subhanallah, such that when we get in the day of judgment, when we get in front of Allah on that day, we have these deeds, we bring them forth. They came with us. We have not slandered anyone because we didn't lose our deeds. Subhanallah, having wronged someone and we brought them forth. Our bucket was not leaking. We had deeds, we filled them into the bucket. And you know what we did? We ensured that there was no leak at the bottom. In the same way that when you do a bad deed, you seek forgiveness. When you do a good deed, seek to protect that deed. You follow what I'm saying? When you do a bad deed, you seek forgiveness, it's wiped out. When you do a good deed, seek protection, so it's consolidated. You need to remember this. Going back to the day of judgment, my brothers and sisters, to do your deed is one thing, but to come with that deed is perhaps 10 times more difficult. Therefore, Allah says, whoever comes with the deed, I will multiply it by 10 for them. Now, do you understand why the multiplication?